Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As you may see, my topic of presentation is scaling up commercial horticulture in Cambodia. Uh, I just would like to bring to your attention that when we say commercial agriculture, don't think of that something like North America or something that you see in Brazil or Argentina. We're talking about small scale, smallholders production level, pretty much in some cases like the size of this room. So uh, I just would like to bring that to your attention. And uh, the plan that I'm talking about is still under the mission level, so we are refining it. Uh, yesterday I presented the country profile for Cambodia, and uh, I would like to do it again. Uh, Cambodia is relatively a small country as compared to India, the population is only 15 million, with over 70% under the age of 35 years. So you may see that the youth population is pretty high in Cambodia. And the ratio of uh, women to men is almost a little bit more than 50%. And the engagement of women is pretty high. 62% of uh, the agricultural production, they are involved in 62%, and 62% of the micro, small, and medium enterprise is held by women. And women-headed household is comprised almost a quarter of rural population, and 69% of their poor householders. Uh, the engagement of women generally is really relatively high. Uh, the index shows that out of one, the Cambodian women scored almost 0.9. So it's a pretty high movement of women. Agriculture accounts 30% of the GDP, but 70% of the population is engaged in this sector. So again, you may see how poverty prevails in Cambodia. And uh, in order to alleviate this problem, we are suggesting you know, the crop diversification, particularly rice with horticultural products. Uh, at this time of the year, for example, there is no rice on the field and there is nothing to do. So if the farmers tend to produce some horticultural uh, items or crops, that will uh, supplement their income. The kinds of Vegetable crops that we're talking about are these components, grout, cucumber, long green beans, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is not all without a problem. There are challenges that Cambodia is facing. And first of all, it is a subsistent agriculture. It's uh, pretty much you know, production from hand to mouth. And uh, this is really very challenging working with poor farmers who have just nothing. Uh, the starting point in order to have a good development is a challenging task. Uh, the diet, as I tried to indicate yesterday, is a challenging issue. Uh, this is basically traditional in Cambodia, in the Cambodian family. Seasonal labor migration, it's a problem again. When we do a development work out on the field, we do it during the wet season and during the dry season, they're not there. So we gotta keep them you know, on the farm. This is a challenging task. Uh, the water issue is another problem. Uh, during the wet season, we have floods, heavy rain, and during the dry season, it's really dry. There is nothing out on the field. So uh, we have really to work on this side and uh, drought and flooding is an issue in Cambodia. Uh, the other challenging part is the rural extension part of it. The government doesn't have really a structured uh, extension system. There is a national extension office. Uh, at the provincial level, they still have offices, and at the district level, they have at least one representative. But at the commune level, there is just nothing, so we have to work on that one. Uh, the horticulture sector is, uh, is uh, small, but really expanding. Now, in order to scale up our horticulture, we're using our 
uh, flagship program, Harvest. Harvest is uh, uh, our Feed the Future flagship program, and the implementing agency is uh, Fintrack. Harvest is implementing this uh, uh, plan, and we have four provinces, Simrip, uh, Kampuntam, Prusat, and Batambang. Simrip is our hub of vegetable production. There is almost a million visitors coming to Simrip, and they consume the vegetables that's coming from Vietnam and uh, Thailand. Uh, why do we have to scale commercial horticulture? This is basically the others failed, and we succeeded. The harvest program, uh, particularly the uh, mid-term evaluation, showed that commercial horticulture is a viable uh, task to be done. Uh, the success is built particularly on the extension system of the harvest program. There is an intensive use of extension program with lead farmers and uh, NGOs involved in it, and the technical assistance is very intensive. Uh, the packages that Harvest Program is using is drip irrigation, plastic mulch raised, and the business development plan, and it's using the three cycle uh, uh, production system, and with intensive uh, use of extension workers, that is a business model for Harvest. Now, the success of this program is based on these results that's shown 800 to 1200 per uh, 800 to 1200 square meters of uh, this is a small size but very effective now there are 2000 direct beneficiaries at this time and if you want to scale up the ratio of one uh, farmer demonstration farmer can convince five which means that Five times twenty, uh, five times five is twenty-five thousand uh, critical mass we have, and that twenty-five thousand can trigger a spontaneous scale up to one hundred thousand. That is that is our scaling plan. We want to reach one hundred thousand uh, people in a long period of time. Of course, now there are certain criticisms and responses we have. So they said it's for the market crowd is also a giveaway. It's not a giveaway, it's just a co-investment to trigger you know, uh, extension programs and production systems. And farmers may drop you know, the activity once. No, they don't. Actually, 70% of them stay on the farm. And the other is that it's an NGO delivery extension system and doesn't have any sustainability. Well, of course, it's a five-year program. It's not going to sustain, but the farmers are almost extension agents by themselves. They are the nucleus, they are self sustained uh, And we are working on that one too. And uh, finally, I would like to say that the subsidy or co-investment is a successful program. This is a special, it's a unique to harvest, unique to pin truck, and it's a viable program. And the critical mass of the farmer Diffusion, what we call it, you know, the campaign program. It's just like vaccination. Once the vaccination, you get a vaccination, you got uh, the uh, viability and resistance to any kind. We call it a campaign program. And uh, this requires, of course, a long-term uh, patience. Uh, and uh, in fact, it's not without any challenging. And we are not anticipating to answer all the questions, but there are some still challenges. People without land, farmers without land, may not necessarily get our benefit. So this program assumes at least uh, land ownership pretty much the, the size of this room. And extension service, which is uh, very much important to continue the service. At this time, we are uh, looking for ITC. And uh, VHWS is uh, the Ministry of Agriculture is uh, trying to use the animal health workers and uh, to convert those into extension workers. So we are trying to train those. At least Harvest has started training 400 of them right now. And we might be using those in, uh, in the future. Microfinance uh, is uh, an issue. There is a program for us, but they are not using their maximum uh, capacity, so uh, this is a challenge. And uh, I think uh, I'm on time. Thank you. <laughs>
To learn more about scaling and how you can contribute to this growing body of knowledge, please visit agrilinks.org slash scaling.